Hello and welcome to Thursday, March the 10th. And we've been looking all week at uh, how to build bridges, how to be people who are capable of reaching across a breach. And we talked about the fact that that can be uh, a very serious thing, like I haven't spoken to them in six months or I haven't spoken to them in six years, but that it could also be uh, much like I talked about Hendersonville and Mount Juliet are only about a half a mile apart at certain places, but it's a 30 mile an hour round trip, I mean 30 mile round trip to get all the way around because you can't go straight across, there's no bridge. And that in relationships that we have with one another, even between a husband and a spouse or between a, a parent and a child or between a coworker and a coworker, we may be this close to each other, but when it comes down to actually the distance it takes to have a conversation, it's very long because there needs to be a bridge. There's something in between us that needs to have a, uh, that chasm needs to be breached so that we can get over there. So we've been looking at that. Now yesterday, I gave you two verses uh, that talked about the expediency and then gave you some principles. I gave you the first half of a list of principles that I give people when they're looking at trying to resolve conflict being able to sit down and actually have a healthy conversation, bridge building. And uh, I want to read the, pa the first passage we're keeping. I think a good passage is worth at least two days. And really think about it. I changed the second one out because I want us to think about the message that it has. The first one is Ephesians 4.25. And it says, Therefore, each of you must, must put off falsehood and speak truthfully with his neighbor with his spouse, with his kids. You know, so many times it's easier just to go with the flow than it is to really make it healthy. We have to put off the falsehood, the, the illusion that something's going on, and speak truthfully. For we are all members of one body, he says. In your anger, do not sin. Because it's very easy when we become upset to do really dysfunctional things. And that's what this list is all about. The dysfunctional things we do by habit that we have to change if we're going to be great bridge builders. So do nothing in your anger. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Handle it quickly. And do not give the devil a foothold. Because when we harbor that, it sets up, it becomes an infection that makes our relationship sick, unhealthy. Now the second passage I want us to look at today is Romans 12, 9, and 10. It says, love must be sincere. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we try to pass off as love or concern or care, which is really just anger and frustration masked in a smile and a kind word. Okay? That isn't, it says love must be sincere. If I'm going to build this bridge, I've got to really care. I've got to really want this relationship to be healthy. Otherwise, I may say the right words, I may try to look the right way, but everything about it is going to sound false. It's not going to be sincere. He goes, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Because there's going to be some stuff that's dysfunctional. There's going to be some other stuff that really is healthy and needs to be retained. It needs, even if it's flickering like a little flame, it needs to be fanned back into a big flame. There's going to be both. There's going to be some dysfunction. There's going to be some good. So we hate what is evil. We cling to what is good. But we are devoted to one another in brotherly love and we honor one another above ourselves. This is the call that Christ has called us to. Even as I shared Sunday morning, he said we, if we call ourselves Christians, need to instigate the bridge building, not just sit around, even if we think they're more at fault, even if they think they started it. We set the tone. We make the difference. Now, yesterday we looked at the, the first, uh, and if you need uh, definitions on these, you just need to go back and look at yesterday's. But we talked about identify the issue, because many times we're arguing over stupid stuff that is triggering it, but not the real thing. Choose the right time and place. If we want to beat each other up, any place works. Uh, but not if we want to have a healthy conversation. Begin with the positive and force ourselves, as we talked in objectivity on day two on Tuesday, we have to fight for objectivity. And then the fourth one we talked about was take each other seriously, even when we feel like the thing might be unreasonable. Today we want to start off with express anger non-abusively. Now, this term gets thrown around a lot, but what we're really talking about is I've got, if I choose the right time, get on the right issue, begin with a positive stroke, and take things serious and begin to really look at this relationship, and my heart is sincere and I want to go, Anything that starts to be aggressive, where I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I just need to take a time out, back out, take a breath, 
uh, ask for a moment to walk around the block. I can't be abusive. Now, some people, you know, talk about abuse as if I were to hit someone. Obviously, that's the far-reaching case. But I can be, uh, actually uh, had an individual that was upset with me over something I said in a message one time. And every single time that I would, he would say, but the Bible says this, the Bible says this. And I would go, yes, it does. It absolutely does. But the Bible also says, and every time that I would share something that would share why my point was strong, and his, he would stand up. And look down on me and go, I'm just going to tell you, I have been studying this. And, and I just told him, I said, you're going to have to sit down. And was he being aggressive? Did he want to hurt me? No, but his frustration caused him to stand up. And I had to crane my head back like I was a little four-year-old listening to him lecture. And finally, I just said, listen, if you can't stay in the chair, I only have two options. Sit here and look like a four-year-old. And then I stood up. And I said, once I stand up, now we've gotten into confrontation. It's unhealthy. If you can't stay in the seat, we can't have the conversation. Now, I had to just call it out because it was, it was not healthy. He was using that as a frustration method. And I said, if we need to take a time out, we need to walk around, that's fine. But we have to have a healthy conversation. Number two to, for today, adding to the list, don't play games. And there's a million games. There's the husband kick me, I'm a dog game. Right, you know, I, well, I'll never be the man you need me to be. Obviously, I'm never going to help you. Oh, that's bull. Just don't even do it. That's a game. There's the old game, yeah, well, you know, you can be right, but you'll pay for it later because you're getting no affection for forever, right? You know, or whatever those little games that we play because they are not sincere. They are not honoring one another above ourselves. They are not uh, uh, handling things quickly with health. They are making it dysfunctional. Next is don't be passive-aggressive. Passive-aggressive is where you walk in and say, for instance, the, your uh, spouse was unhappy and you go, hey, honey, and you hear nothing. You go, you okay? I'm fine. And then they slam the pot down on the stove so hard it rattles everything in the kitchen. You go, you sure you're all right? You go, oh, I'm fine. Why? Is there something I should be upset about? Wham! Right? You, know, and you just go, I know you're mad. Don't tell me you're not, right? Because what it does is the other person, it escalates their frustration level just as high as the person that's already frustrated. It creates a volatile situation. If I'm angry, give them two pieces of information. Two pieces, very important. Number one, yes, I am upset. Can't talk about it right now. I want to choose the right time and place. We'll sit down. First piece of information, yes, I'm upset. Second piece of information, and it is about this. That way the other person can know what it's about, know that you're upset, and have time to process and get ready to have a healthy conversation. Or get ready to find ammunition, have a really unhealthy conversation if they're that type of person. But if you're going to set the example, you have to set the example. So we can't be abusive, we can't play games, and we can't be passive aggressive. We've got to sincerely say what is going on. The next one is avoid ex asking people to explain their behavior because again it puts them on the defense and that is not what we want. We want two people moving toward each other. So and I shared this yesterday it's a great example of it where when I would come home my wife uh, would say why are you late? Well I did this. Well why did you make that decision? Well because I, I thought it was the right thing to do. Well, why didn't you do that yesterday? Didn't you have time? Well, I was busy yesterday. Well, why were you busy yesterday? You know, it's just, oh, it's just attack, attack, attack. When my wife finally said, John, you need to understand, when you walk through that door 15, 20, 30 minutes late, I interpret that you don't love me. Now, she didn't tell me. She didn't ask me to explain my behavior. She said, this is how I interpret it. And I went, baby, but, but I do love you. I'm not saying you don't love me. I'm saying you need to understand when you walk through that door 15 minutes late, I interpret that you don't care. But I do care, baby. You may care. You have to understand when you walk through that door 15 minutes late, the only thing that I have running through my mind is you don't really care about me. But baby, I do care. Every time, did you hear my response? It was not frustrated. It was not, she was not telling me, this is what you are. She's saying, this is how I interpret it. You need to understand that. And I'm constantly moving toward her. So don't ask people to explain their behavior. Share with them how you interpret it and why you're reacting the way that you are. Uh, the last one is uh, no labeling or name calling. Uh, you're, you're a male chauvinist pig. You're just like your mother. All those things 
are simply ways that we can throw this label on them, which is like a big suit that never really fits right. Some of it may be true, but none of it all. And they always go, well, I'm not like my mother. I don't do this. I don't do this. It's just, it's, it is bad behavior. Don't do it. And the last one is avoid triangles. Triangles are where you go, well, you know, Sally, you come over here. Or Bert, you come over here. And, you know, what do you think? Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter what Sally and Bert think. You know the only reason we call them over here is because we thought they'd agree with us, right? And we don't have to do life with them. We're not going to sleep with them tonight. I have to do life with this person. I have to do life with my son, or I have to do life with my coworker. It doesn't matter what this third person thinks. Uh, you know, and it doesn't even have to be a real person. It can be why well, I watched Oprah today, and Oprah said, and now it's me and Oprah against you, right? No, it's unhealthy. Uh, is there ever a time that you might want to get an outside opinion? Absolutely. But that's when both of you make that decision, who you're going to ask and get that opinion, not dragging somebody else in. Now, these are bridge-building qualities. Identify the issue. Choose the right time and place. Begin with the positive before the negative. Take each other seriously, even if it doesn't ring true with you. Express anger without being abusive in your actions, your body manner. If you get that way, take a time out. Don't play games. Don't be dishonest. Don't be passive aggressive. Don't say one thing because you think it, it's easier or whatnot. Got to be honest. Avoid asking people to explain their behavior. Simply say, this is how I interpret it. Avoid labeling and name calling and triangles. If you can get this list under control, because I guarantee you, I have violated every single one of those things when I have been, quote unquote, trying to make a relationship healthy or have an honest conversation. I've defied every single one of them. They are natural to do and they are destructive to the health and bridge building that we've been talking about this week. Now, I'm going to put a link in your show notes there, uh, right up there at the top with the uh, notes, so that you can pull up that list and see that list and think about that as you listen to these two series. So that link will be in there. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we know that it is very difficult from time to time to be able to do healthy bridge building. But Lord, you said that love must be sincere. We realize some of it's negative, and we are to hate that, but we are to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Father, as we begin to consider our bridge-building skills, Lord, as we have to fight off our prejudice and work through all of these different uh, things that are so counterintuitive to our fallen nature, that, Lord, you will give us the strength and the wisdom that we need. Father, we look for you to do that work in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys. Check out that list. Pray those passages into your life. Let God do something big. And I'll see you tomorrow.